Hi, Pat Infante here with another no music, no logo, no frills instructional video. I make get to the point videos about various topics related to photography. If you like this type and style of instructional video, please like and subscribe. And why not hit the bell icon so you'll be notified each time I release a new video. Now let's get to it. As the thumbnail indicated, this is for Capture One uh, and about its uh, recipe uh, function. So uh, sometimes people are confused, especially if they're coming from Lightroom or another um, post post processing tool. They wonder what these recipes are. Um, sometimes it, the implication is um, sounds more complex than it actually is. But basically, what recipes are is a collection of settings that will be used when you output your particular image. So when you take your image and you put it out to uh, whatever file type you've cho that yeah, you're choosing, um, with particular s uh, settings for resolution or uh, watermark or uh, size, all these things can be stored in a recipe. You can have multiple recipes. And you can e actually generate images from multiple recipes at the same time. So the way you get to the recipes is you need to go to export and in a previous video I uh, we spoke about the exporter and if you hadn't seen that I will link that video at the end uh, but we here we are in capture one we go to the export function and we get this export screen um, this exporter had replaced the output panel from previous versions this exporter works uh, this is captured to option 122 and it, for at least the, the previous two versions uh, exporter was uh, was was part of the feature set so here we are in the exporter and at the top here are all these export recipes well there's four of them that I have there we'll make a new one um, and also too if you take go to the plus sign and you hold it down you can see some recipes that are built in to capture one as part of the uh, the factory settings. But we're not going to use that. We're going to create our own. Uh, in this section here, you'll notice various settings uh, as well as a summary of all your settings. And, and I'll talk about um, how that can indicate that there may be some issues as well. Um, and again, if you're not, this is not all the settings. This is a simplified version of the settings. If you want to see all the settings, which I normally do, is you come down to where it says show all options click that and now you have a multitude of settings uh, actually every setting you can possibly have when you're going to export an image okay uh, so let's let's so let's just take a look here so so uh, let's use um, my full-size sc screen sharpened uh, recipe and what I have here is I have it go into a folder called JPEGs or JPGS. Um, it shows me how much space is left on the output device, uh, in this case on a, on a um, external hard drive. Um, there's a naming convention here. Here it's just using the image name. We'll talk about that in a little bit. The format's going to be JPEG. It's going to be 100% quality. Uh, the uh, color space is going to be sRGB, which is you know best for uh, displaying online, as you may already know. You got resolution, how you want to scale it. Uh, you have some other adjustments as well. We'll talk about those. Watermark, uh, so on and so forth. Now, just take a look at, and also too, if you remember from the previous video, when you're in the exporter, uh, proofing is on by default. So what you're seeing is what it's going to look like in its final state when you actually export it. So for instance, um, just to show you how these settings are saved per recipe, if I go down to Instagram optimized, notice it actually changes size because Instagram is set for uh, 1080 width on pixels. and that is or I believe up to this time is what's the recommended uh, horizontal for a landscape type image on Instagram but it's 1080 pixels so it's scaled down to 1080 pixels on the width 
uh, we kept the ratio in place so it automatically changes the the vertical as well to keep the uh, proportions uh, if I use another uh, recipe here this is full-size print sharpened uh, what you'll notice here output sharpen for print if I click this recipe up here I'll put you on for screen. All I'm trying to show you here is how you select the different recipes and how it's just um, showing you which settings have been saved in that recipe. So it's fairly straightforward. Um, also, too, there's check boxes, as you notice, next to each of these recipes. That's because you can actually output the you can export the image using multiple recipes so you can get say a, a full size screen sharpened version and then maybe you want a uh, lower resolution jpeg a smaller file because you want to um, post it somewhere uh, on facebook or on a website and then maybe also too you need to um, put it over on uh, instagram you'll you can generate all those various uh, outputs at the same time um, now, one other thing too, it, now notice when I clicked this, right, the image didn't change. That's because you need to select it to show you what particular, uh, what it's going to look on the output. So uh, whatever one you're highlighting is what you're actually looking at, which is something interesting as well. Let me show you something else. If I unclick these here, okay, uh, I go down to a summary. You can see what that says right there. It's a summary of, you know, of, of all the settings, basically. Not all the settings, but the majority of the settings. And if I go and click on another one, but I don't actually check mark it, notice this turns red here. That's because we're looking at a recipe, but we haven't selected it for output. If I select it, that red goes away. So even if I didn't have any check marks at all, and I was just looking at my recipes, that's not going to give you your output. You have to check it. Again, the warning is this is red here. If I click it up here, it's not red anymore. So let's just go ahead and make a new uh, recipe. So to do that, you hit the plus sign, and it'll say untitled recipe. We'll just call it uh, uh, test one. Okay. And I'm going to uncheck that one there. And now this is the the one that's orange is the active, the one that we're looking at. Okay. Again, not, we're not talking about what's going to happen during the export. This is the one we're looking at. Okay. So it comes up with a set of default parameters. Okay. So let's take a look. Um, first of all, where it's going to go, like uh, you know where where the file is going to reside once you where you ex where you where you're exporting it to. So in this case, I'm actually exporting it to uh, downloads, which is actually defined in the catalog. Uh, if I wanted to, I could actually select, uh, choose folder, and go actually, it'll bring you, this is a Mac, uh, it'll bring me to um, uh, the file finder. Uh, on a PC, it'll take you to uh, a directory. So you would then choose whatever particular uh, download folder you want the images to reside in. Uh, this here will give you the path. All right, it's a sample path. So it's going to be users. It's my name, a bunch of other stuff where the dots are finally in the download folder. It also shows you this, again, as I mentioned before, how much space is left in that space, in that folder, because there might be an indication where, you know, you know the file is going to be large or whatever it's going to be. If it's, uh, this will give you an indication where you have enough space to, I'll put the file. Um, now, under naming, this here is the default name, or sort of the default name of uh, my file. This is from a Nikon, so we have the DSC prefix. Um, and in the naming, you have a bunch of tokens. So if I click here, it'll show me all the tokens that I can actually use. And these tokens are actually information pulled from the the uh, EXIF information, the EXIF information that's stored in the image. So for instance, if I wanted to include, right now it's just image name. If I wanted to include, let's say, let's find something here. Uh, let's say I wanted to include the, the month that the image was captured. I can take that, bring it up here, 
and maybe I want to include the year put that up here I can also choose if I want a two digit or four digit year I can choose what I want for the monthly format as well um, and if you don't want these obviously all lumped together I can actually go between them I can put a dash or a dot I wouldn't put a dot because it can be confused as a file extension um, and if I do that so now it's image name image month image year and I click OK notice what happens here it's image name image month and the rest of it you know runs off of the uh, the thing but you can scroll over and you can see what it's going to be so you can choose the various tokens that you want to have make up the um, the name of the image uh, if you want to get rid of them you just get rid of them uh, you can also type something in there if you wanted to and again here's your sample All right so if you clicked OK here it would come up saying image name dash test so if you wanted to give it a custom name you can include that with tokens as well so I'm just going to clear that put that back to image name all right uh, next is the format and size so I'm going to output this um, I would output this as let's say a, a JPEG uh, I can choose the quality let's say for instance I want it to be small it's going to be on the web so I don't really need you know 100% uh, so maybe move it down to like 80 or something like that you can also type in this box too um, also the ICC profile which is the color space um, it selects Adobe RG RGB by default you would want sRGB for most cases this is the best color space for uh, displaying on a on a screen um, you uh, also can indicate the um, the resolution um, and uh, whether it's going to be scaled and you can choose for instance um, you know, width and height now see what happened to the uh, the image because again we're in proofing mode I, this is inches if I change it to pixels uh, I could you know change this to uh, 2,000 pixels and 1200 whatever uh, and again it's if I do that all right you can see what's happening to the uh, particular image it's affecting it so you have full control over what you want the output to be and you can specify the scaling the size I'm just gonna say fixed leave it at a hundred percent which would be the entire image uh, you can scale it down less than a hundred percent and you'll get uh, an image that is less than a hundred percent size uh, of the original image uh, you can also here if you wanted to when you output the image you can have it automatically open up in another program so I want to say output it and then open it up in Adobe uh, Photoshop or, or have it open it up in preview uh, that's preview is the uh, uh, the, the Mac version of a, uh, a way to read a PDF file if you're using a PC uh, you might not be familiar with the Mac um, terminology um, also too with the adjustments the crop you can have it respect the crop if it's cropped you can have it ignore the crop so that whatever you crop will no longer be cropped and it'll output it uh, uncropped which is typically not something you would do because you crop the image for a particular reason you want it to look a particular way uh, as far as sharpening you can choose uh, your output sharpening screen print or you can just disable it all right you can say no output sharpening um, as far as a watermark now watermark is an image that you place on the file uh, that can be your logo or be your name some people use watermark some people do not uh, it can be text you can actually type in text here or it can be an image and if it's an image what you would do is you can either specify the file path by clicking this buttons right here or you can take you can bring up your file finder or explorer if it's a PC and you can drag the image into this box here okay and uh, you can then take your uh, watermark it'll display on the image you can if you want you can control the opacity how big it is and also horizontal and vertical positioning or you just take on the hand on the hand here you um, click on that and you can actually move the watermark around the image 
okay? Uh, I don't have a, a watermark set uh, in this profile, so that's why I'm not actually showing you, but once you drop a file here, uh, or you put in the particular path, uh, you will see uh, your watermark uh, on your image, if you so choose. Um, as far as the metadata, you can choose how much of the metadata. That's, again, data that's stored in the file, and it's part of the file structure. Uh, you can choose how much or how little of that information you want to be contained in the file. Uh, you might want to include a copyright. Um, you may or may not want to include GPS coordinates if you didn't want someone to know exactly where it was taken, provided the camera had the ability to input that, um, so on and so forth. So you can choose what metadata you want. And finally, like I said, there's a summary of the major settings of uh, what the name's going to be, what the file name's going to be, this is the recipe name, the file name, the size, uh, what the scaling is going to be, what the color space is, the format. And it tells you approximately what the size of the file is going to be, which is handy sometimes because sometimes you're constrained by file size if you're uploading to a particular website or a particular tool that requires your file to be a, a certain size or a smaller size. Um, now, again, up here, I've clicked on test, so that's the one that will actually uh, get exported when I come down over here, the lower right of the screen, where it says export image. Uh, that's one's going to get acted upon. If I uncheck it, this turns red because it says, "Hey, you're looking at a uh, uh, you're looking at a recipe, uh, but it's not selected for uh, for output." So if I click that here like that, that will be, but let's say I wanted to do my test recipe and also do a full size screenshot and at the same time, I can do that. But again, I'm getting the red prompt down here because while I'm looking at that, and that's what I'm seeing here on the screen, that recipe, I'm not selecting it. When I select it, the red goes away. Now, we created this new recipe called test, all right? I'm not going to export this. I'm actually going to close the exporter. And if we then go back to export, and if I go to test, the settings that we made uh, are still here. So there's no place where you actually have to save the recipe. It's automatically saved by virtue of just uh, adding a recipe, giving it a name, and then setting these parameters here. So that is pretty much it. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I uh, normally respond to all comments and questions. Um, if you are a beginner, uh, either in uh, capturing photos or in uh, editing photos, uh, I also have a Facebook group called Photo 101 and Beyond with Patrick F. Infante. Um, there is a link on my main YouTube page for that. And um, again, if you find these videos helpful, please click the like icon. It will help others find my videos. And consider subscribing and hitting the bell so you'll know when I release new videos. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.